Hey Chemistry, this is Mrs. KJ going over part of the Unit 5 lab, which is part of the Unit 5 pre-lab. And in the lab, we're going to be talking about solubility. So again, the word soluble, like down here, means what? It means it can dissolve. So if something is insoluble, that means it cannot. Because the prefix in or im, I am, such as impossible or improbable, it means the opposite of. So impossible, not possible. Insoluble, not soluble, not going to dissolve. So let's take a look at the other words on our legend down here. We have SL sol, so slightly soluble. So if it's slightly soluble, that means it's slightly not. It's kind of like an in-between. So this one means complete solid will be created. This one means a liquid. This one means a little bit of a solid, kind of, but still technically it did create a solid, just not a lot of it. And then blank means that compound simply does not exist as far as we know. All right, so what we're going to use this for is to determine whether or not a compound is going to make a precipitate. And what is a precipitate again? When you combine two or more liquids and they make a solid, and is it a chemical or physical reaction? We created a new substance that was not a phase change, so it is a chemical reaction. All right, so let's look at some examples. If I put fluorine, an ion of fluorine, with NH4, if we look on here, we see that it is sol, soluble. So that means it is or is not going to dissolve. It is going to dissolve. So will it make a chunky solid? No, because it dissolved. All right, what about fluorine with lithium? Will it make a precipitate? It says it is soluble, so it will dissolve. Dissolve means it's all liquid, not chunky solids, so no, no precipitate. All right, what's the first one on the list with fluorine that will make a precipitate? Because it cannot dissolve, so it makes the chunky solid through a chemical reaction, would be fluorine with magnesium. What about calcium and fluorine? Will it make a precipitate? Yes. What about barium and fluorine? Will it make a precipitate? Yeah, kind of. Technically, yes, but just not a lot. What about aluminum with fluorine? Will it make a precipitate? No, it is soluble. So when you get to the lab, you are going to be given some compounds. And with those compounds, you're going to tell me whether or not you would predict they would be the precipitate. So if I have KOH. All right, so the anions are over here, so that's going to be our second part, the OH. Or if you want to start with the K and go that way, that whichever is easier for you. So when we find KOH, will it make a precipitate? No, because it is soluble, it will dissolve and stay a liquid. All right, what about if I have aluminum sulfide? So go ahead and find that on the chart. Will that make a precipitate? So I have a-L-S. It's blank. What did blank mean? It does not exist. So if it doesn't exist, obviously it's not going to make a precipitate. Okay, so what about if I give you sulfate? If I have SO4. So SO4. And let's put that with aluminum. What will that do? So SO4 and aluminum. No precipitate. What will aluminum make a precipitate with? If it's aluminum OH, aluminum hydroxide, what else? Aluminum phosphate. And a little bit on this bottom one here, which I know is hard to see, if you had AlCH3CO2. All right, I will give you this table all the time for tests and quizzes. You do not have to memorize this. The point is that you know how to use it, not that you memorize it. As always, if you have questions, let me know. And then there's another video um, that someone else put on YouTube that I thought was a good way to show the solubility rules, especially if you go on in chemistry. It's good to know some of the tips and tricks for it. And just so that you know, Castro there, if you're like, where'd that come from? Um, Fidel Castro. So... All right, watch that other recording and then go ahead with the worksheets.